about the middle four interchange law. Now, last time we talked about natural transformations, and we defined two kinds of comp composition for them. We defined horizontal composition and vertical composition. Now, the middle four interchange law governs the interaction between the horizontal and the vertical composition. But before we look at that, I want to talk a bit more about this horizontal composition that we defined and see what's really going on. So I didn't really tell you the whole story last time. Now remember, this is how we define horizontal composition. We're starting with a configuration where we've got two natural transformations, alpha and beta, that are kind of side by side like this. And the aim is to produce a natural transformation that goes from the composite along the top to the composite along the bottom. And this is the formula we had. Remember that there were two ways of doing it, but they were both the same because of the naturality of beta. Now, let's just try a little experiment here. What happens if one of these things was the identity? So let's try putting beta to be the identity. So h equals k, and let's put beta to be the identity on k. Then what happens to this formula? So we get beta is the identity on h. So that's the identity on h star alpha. Its components are x. Well, let's just plug it into this formula. Up here, we get just the same uh, h of alpha of x. And here, what have we got? We've got, well, we've got the identity natural transformation. And the identity transform natural transformation, remember, it has every component is the identity. So every component of that is the identity. Oh, look, we've just composed something with the identity. Nothing happened. Right. So that's what we've got there. And because it looks like h, it's just h of alpha, we sometimes write this natural transformation as just h alpha. And we sometimes draw it like this. Alpha goes from f to g, and then it's just got a flat bit on the end, which is h. So now let's try making this, uh, this side a flat bit. So now let's put f equals g, and put alpha to be the identity on f. So now we're looking at a flat bit over here. Uh, we've got a beta here, and we've just got the identity on f over here. So let's see. Um, Beta starred with the identity on f, its component of x. Well, now let's plug it into here. This is still going from h to k. So what we're going to have here is we've got beta at the component f of x. So we've got beta at the component f of x composed with k of the identity. Now, k of the identity is, of course, just the identity. So when we compose it with that, that's all we get. Right? So because this looks like beta with an f on it, we sometimes write this as beta with a functor f on the right-hand side. This one is a bit more straightforward. This one looks a bit funny. And you have to remember that what this means is its component of x is the component of beta at f of x. So it's like we've defined two little fishes, one that's swimming in this direction and one that's swimming in this direction. And now if you look really carefully, the general definition we made of horizontal composition is really the composite of a fish swimming in one direction followed by a fish swimming in the other direction. You see, we've got h of alpha first and we've got beta of g afterwards. So what we've really done here is, so if this is the first definition and this is the second definition, our first definition of horizontal composition really said do alpha with an h stuck onto it first and then do beta with uh, 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 a g stuck onto it afterwards and compose those two things vertically. Okay? Now, the second definition, what did the second definition say? It said do it the other way around. It said do beta with an f stuck onto it first and then do alpha with a k stuck onto it afterwards and now compose them vertically. So this was the second definition that we gave that corresponds to this one here. And naturality says that those two definitions are the same. So these are equal, equal by naturality. So that's what we secretly made use of when we made this definition of horizontal composition. And now it should become completely obvious that the middle four interchange law is going to hold. Of course, it's not going to be obvious when I haven't told you what it's supposed to be. So let me now tell you what the middle four interchange law says. It says that suppose if you've got four, that's why it's middle four, four natural transformations in this configuration here, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Now you'll notice that there are 
are two possible ways you could compose up this diagram. You could either do, you could do the, the horizontal bit first, you could do alpha composed with gamma horizontally and beta composed with delta horizontally. So let's see what that thing. You've got alpha composed with gamma horizontally and then afterwards you're going to do delta composed with beta horizontally. So this is sort of do this horizontal part and do this horizontal part and then compose them vertically afterwards. Or you could alternatively do uh, beta composed with alpha vertically followed by horizontally uh, delta composed with gamma. Let's see, have I got that right? So you're doing, yeah, so this is the left hand part. It's always a bit confusing because you're working everything backwards. Okay, so these are the two possible ways of doing it. And this one is like saying, do the vertical part on each side and then stick them together horizontally afterwards. Now the point is that these two things are supposed to be the same. So this, which I'm now going to write in the middle of the board, is the middle four interchange rule. The middle four. That's the middle four interchange rule. Is this. So why is it true? Well, you can sit down and write out all those components if you really wanted to and check that it's true by naturality. However, I've drawn these nice little pictures, at least I think they're nice little pictures, over here. So I'm going to use those nice little pictures to show it's true instead, because I don't need this junk anymore. So what's it saying here? It's saying, do the horizontal composite and this horizontal composite. So let's say that we're writing this horizontal composite like this in the first place. Doing this horizontal composite. That's um, alpha, this is alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So we're doing alpha, gamma, and then we're doing beta, delta. Okay? But oh look, this naturality thing says that we can switch round the two little fishes in the middle so that they're both pointing the same way. So that's the same way. We leave the top and bottom the same. But now we switch around the two little fishes in the middle so that they're swimming in the opposite directions that they used to be. You can only switch them around if there are two of them, of course. But what's this? That's the vertical composite of alpha and gamma. And this is, so that's alpha and gamma. And this is the vertical composite of beta and delta. And now we've got two little sort of composite fishes swimming in opposite directions. So we know that what we've effectively done is we've composed them uh, horizontally. So you'll notice that actually the only thing we used here was the fact that we can swap these two, these two little fishes in opposite directions. And that shows that the middle four interchange law holds. That's not completely rigorous proof, but as I said, you could sit down and write down those components if you really wanted to. I don't really want to, so I'll leave that to you. Next time, what we'll show is that this is one of the key axioms that characterizes a two-category. And what we're going to show is that categories, functors, and natural transformations form a two-category.